Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I have a question for, for each member of, of the panel, and, and, and that is um, how much responsibility do you give Congress versus um, the, the agencies with rulemaking authority uh, in terms of placing the burdens on small business? Do you think it's, it's poorly written le legislation, uh, too broad uh, uh, directives? Uh, given to the regulatory authorities, uh, you know, obviously when we look at the, the recently health care um, affordability act, uh, that had a 1099 provision in it that we, we found was incredibly burdensome to small businesses, but the Congress then stepped in and repealed uh, that particular provision. Um, how, d talk about um, that line of responsibility between um, Congress, in terms of providing legislation, and, and the and the rulemaking authority, could the Congress of the United States do a better job? Um, are we are do we, are we giving far too much discretion, Mr. Swain? That's that's a key question, Congressman, um, and I don't have a, a single answer on it. I think it's almost inevitable, given some of the sub the complexity of some of the subjects that the Congress is dealing with, that you have to. Um, essentially kick the can over to the agencies and say, come up with the specific details. Um, it's very hard, as you would know much better than I, to achieve closure sometimes on merely general principles, let alone uh, the highly specific details. Um, that said, I think that uh, the Congress can give direction, can, uh, through committee reports and other mechanisms, uh, advise the agency of its general intentions as to what it would like the agency to do and what it wants the agency to be aware of. And it Congress could probably do more along those lines. I won't get into uh, the details about whether courts pay attention to that sort of non-legislative direction. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I think uh, to the extent that in the real world we have complex problems and the Congress cannot in inevitably make every detailed decision on every issue. You will have to always give some discretion to agencies, but you can certainly always give them your intentions as to how they should exercise that discretion. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Luxton. Thank you, Congressman. Um, it is by its nature an iterative process. Uh, when a problem comes up and requires a solution, you only have the information available at that time. The legislation we are looking at today is an example of this. Problems have emerged over time, partly through just the natural way the statute and regulations have been implemented. So I think we just have to assume it is going to be imperfect. It is easier to do iterations in regulation than it is to pass a new act. But occasionally it will be necessary to pause and look at new legislation to cure some of the problems that could not have been anticipated. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we kicked around in the early 90s was whether or not Congress should have something similar to the Regulatory Flexibility Act applied to them. Um, and um, a good example of how it would look is uh, what we have now in committee reports, where there has to be a statement that there are no unfunded mandates, you know, in the particular piece of legislation. Um, you can't do that on the cheap, though. I mean, we have the Congressional Budget Office, we have GAO. Um, and trying to have that kind of um, assessment before you actually move legislation would slow down the legislative process, I think. Um, and, uh, but it has been something that has been discussed. Uh, a former member of this committee, uh, Sue Kelly from New York, uh, came up with an idea back in uh, over the mid to late 90s of having a regulatory review mechanism um, housed, I think, over at the Library of Congress that would serve a parallel function to the Congressional Budget Office to look at what kind of regulations would flow from particular kinds of legislation. And, um, you know, this is something that uh, is worth exploring and worth discussing with, I guess, the <coughs> Rules Committee about whether or not you could have that kind of requirement before you go forward. Thank you. As, as a regulator, I always thought that, and I worked in an agency, OSHA, that had a, an old statute that hasn't been subsequently amended, and 
in many years, uh, and EPA has, has many more. But they are broad discretionary statutes. I always felt that uh, between the statutes, the appropriations riders, the reports, and the, and the judicial review, we, we had uh, the right kind of circumscribed uh, discretion. I think ultimately you, you want agencies to be subject to judicial review, but to have the discretion to, uh, to do some of the things that you are asking them to do today, which is to look carefully at, at more nuanced impacts than the, the broad statutes really allow them to do. Another hey, final point. Please, One of the problems ahead. historically has been um, the IRS and the IRS calling everything that they have an interpretive rule. If you had some mechanism within the legislative process that would lay out the regulatory balancing, I think that would cut off the ability of the IRS to um, go to that default of everything's an interpretive rule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.